and this the the slot widget is only basically known in the inventory because the inventory creates it however the inventory widget we have reference to in other places which is our blueprint component for example so we could be making an advent dispatcher here as well which we call um, item dropped and we'll copy the signature as uh, what did we call it item dropped can we see it over here I cannot see it over here doesn't matter we can create it manually so we'll just make it an s item info again and we'll say item to drop Try that again, item to drop, like so, and then we'll just call that here and shoot the information further. So now we can go to our blueprint component. Our blueprint component has, uh, when we're initializing the widget, a reference to our inventory. So this is where we can actually make sure to bind uh, our reference. So we're going to be setting the inventory either over here or either over here. And we want to uh, listen to both of them. So we do the following. We have an inventory ref over here and we say, Find item dropped. And in the same way that we did before, we want to have a event that uh, listens to this. So we can create another event here just like we did before. And say item drop detected. And we'll just call on our drop item function over here and we'll insert the item over there. Now theoretically what should happen is we have a slot and we're dragging it out here and it gets cancelled and the cancel event happens which makes us call our event dispatcher which the inventory since it created the, the slots uh, listens to so it says oh, okay I heard that you, you got a cancel drag it in turn will then call on a different event dispatcher which is owned by the components that we have on our character which will say that oh I heard that you dropped an item from the inventory let me drop it on the floor and that's what it should be doing and that's not at all what it did <clears throat> so let's see what happens here uh, let's put our breakpoints in all the places that we think are relevant. So it should be the inventory container and it should be the slot over here and it should also be, well that should be okay I think. Let's just make sure that we are we're binding to a uh, inventory slot item over here and in the blueprint component we're binding it to the inventory reference let's put breakpoints on these as well to make sure that we have references when we try to do these things and over there let's debug so <clears throat> first we're trying to um, listen to the events on all the different widgets so we're gonna be getting this uh, hold on a second bind event create widget i was expecting to get hit here multiple times each for each widget that we create uh, apparently we did not Anyway, this one says zero two. So let's resume and see what happens. Then we go over here. Press this. Didn't 
seem to get to the parts where the inventory widget was binding. Uh, 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 let's see here. This one didn't seem to happen. Right, we have an internal. This area over here doesn't happen. We need to do the same thing for that one. Let's move this down here. And like so. So we only put the binding on the external inventories. It should be on the internal ones as well. Wonder if this is enough. We're binding, we're binding. We run over here, pick it up, it's added, put it over here. We say that we have dropped it, we resume. We get to react to the event that it has been dropped. We're gonna call the item as dropped from the inventory container. We resume. We're detecting it in the blueprint component. The blueprint component is saying, okay, react to this by dropping it on the floor and this is the item that you should be dropping. So it says it's a uh, restore some health. So it's an item of a health potion for the quantity of uh, one. So that's correct. So let's resume. And you see now we have dropped a cube on the floor. So that's all good and fine in, in that regard. So now we should be theoretically, and our inventory is empty, we should be able to, let's pick up a, a mana potion. You can see that it looks different. It has a different name. And then we can pick up our health potion again. And we can see that it is the same health potion that we uh, dropped earlier. So let's remove this and let's remove this and let's remove this and like so and then we'll drop the mana potion as well the mana potion some of these have collisions which we should obviously uh, rectify uh, but yeah we are able to pick up potions now we can see also that we can drop these many many potions and we should be able to pick up this potion over here which was the remainder actually it should be once Full stack and 12, I believe, is the remainders that should be appearing here. So we should get a 99 here and a 12 here, if this is correct. A uh, 13. I might have done some math wrong. I'm assuming that this is correct, because it seems close enough. So yeah, now we actually have an inventory where we can uh, move things around and we can drop it on the floor and everything like that. So let's get to the next part of this, which is to have something like a loot bag or a loot chest or something like that. So let's see how we can do that. So let's create a blueprint and let's just call it an uh, actor and uh, BP underscore chest. So the first step that we need to do, and the point of this was to make everything like this easy to add an, an inventory to a different actor, right? To not have to do a lot of code and not make the scalability easy in that regard. That's was the point of this, right? So we want to add a component. We say we want to add the BPC inventory. Now we have added the BPC inventory. We can add a static mesh, just have some kind of visualization of this. And we can make it a cube because I like my cubes, uh, like so. And we are also going to be needing to do a few more things, but let's for now just put it in the world. So we'll put our chest over here. And to make this not take too long, we're just going to do the following. We're going to take our third person character and on a key press of F, let's say, we're going to be getting actor class, uh, actor of class. And we're gonna say BP chest. And this is just so we have an easy reference to the chest to like simulate that we have gone up to it and looked at it. So that's basically all that this is doing is just saving us our time, some time to do some uh, interaction logic. And then with this, we want to interact with it basically. 
So we need to have interactability with this chest. So we have our blueprint that is a BPI interactable, which has an interact with. So we can give the chest that blueprint to begin with. And uh, we'll get to class settings and we'll give it BPI interactable. And once we have done that, we need to implement this uh, event over here to uh, actually work with it. So we get a player in here. We want to get its controlled pawn because the pawn is where we put the, the interface for actually having the, the inventory, right? So we want to check if it implements implement an interface of the type inventory to make sure that this is actually someone that should be able to open and see the contents of the chest right so that's our basic validation for this after we have done that and we find out that it actually is something that can uh, see this then we can get our bpc inventory and we can say show hide inventory and it wants to know for which player and we'll just use the I have to drag a node like this I think like so so that's more or less all that this needs to do um, but there is a little bit more we want to do though we want to have, we talked about how we would have like starting items and that sort of makes sense for chests because they usually have items in them. So we need to add the current items array that we made an interface for earlier. Let's see what uh, S item info, an array of that. And we can make it instance editable and expose and spawn so you can like if you create a chest dynamically, you can just add whatever items you want to have it on the spawn. And if we place it in the world, we can just manually go in and, and change whatever, whichever white items we want it to contain. Um, and then we want to also add our interface for inventory. Like so. And among those things, we had get current inventory items, which is the array that we just created, like so. And I think that might be, no, that is not, yeah, wait, that might be all actually. Let, let's try this out. So, okay, we can remove that one as well. Uh, resume and remove that one and resume so the idea here is okay one one thing we should probably do is also we have this this is the chest this is the current items it has let's add something in here let's add a uh, health potion three health potions and let's add a mana potion of four quantity uh, like so. So the point is supposed to be here now that I pressed I and we can see the inventory that we have here. Now that I press F, I should be able to see uh, the chest inventory. By pressing F, nothing happens. So we need to start debugging again. So let's go to our chest. And actually, did we add any code for. Yeah, we didn't actually interact with this. <laughs> All right, so we want to interact with, uh, let's see here, we want the message call, this one. And we want the player controller to be the interacting player over here. Let's try this again, it might actually work, who knows. So we have an inventory here, it's, it's empty, we press F, and still nothing is happening. Okay, so we need to debug it. Uh, let's see, we start with the chest, we can go to its interact with uh, event, we'll go over here, put a breakpoint here, like so, and then we, sorry, like so, so we get the interact with event, we have a an interacting player, 
we get its pawn. We check if it's implementing the interface. It says true. We say we should show or hide the inventory. So we step in here. We check is this an external or an internal inventory? And this should be an external one because it's a chest. We end up in here, so that's good. We check, do we have an inventory reference? We do not. And this is where it's failing currently. We haven't added this part of the code yet. So let's do that. Like so. And that is a little bit high. Let's do that. And the thing that we need to do here is basically just initialize the widget which we created a function for. So we'll do that. And after we have done that, we just resume whatever logic we're supposed to be doing over here. Uh, we do need an interacting player though. So we need to take a reference of a song. Let's try this again. So we open the inventory, we try to open the chest, we resume and see if it works or not. And we can see that we're actually getting an inventory over here. It looks a little bit odd. Uh, probably because I have some weird uh, settings for it. So let's see if we can figure that out. I'm a little bit bothered by how the controls are messing up. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see here. We create, we go to the blueprint inventory because we're in the init, init widget is where we determine what our uh, inventory container is supposed to look like. And we say it has three rows and four columns. And to double check, we check what this one has. It has three rows and four columns. So that seems to be fair. Uh, could be. This is our overlay currently. And there's this checkbox that says size to content. Could be that we haven't given it enough space. So uh, by s setting its size to content, it's going to be uh, using the space that is needed or desired by the widgets inside of it. So let's see if this fixes the issue for us. So we open the inventory and we open the chest. And there we go. So now you can see that we have um, an inventory here as well. The issue though you can see is we don't have a an icon for the items in here. So we need to fix that. Uh, they haven't been properly loaded. Even though we have said what is inside of here, it hasn't actually gone to the database and made sure to get all the information that it needs. So that we need to fix. That is all for this episode. Hope to see you in the next one. Keep on learning. Take care.